to my channel Rue's Life. So first of all, for any of you that follow me and watch my videos regularly, I must apologise for the big gap in my posting. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, the reason for that is I've really been struggling. Um, work has been particularly busy um, and I've just been coming home completely exhausted. Um, those of you that know me will know that I'm an out of hours emergency veterinary nurse and I work predominantly night shifts. They're 15 hour shifts and recently they've been turning into 16, 17, 18 hour shifts. Um, and then even when I'm having my off days, <laughs> quite literally my days off, um, I've just had no energy and no motivation. So this morning I got myself up and I've severely kicked myself up the bottom and I've tried to push on and get things done. So I thought I'd just make a video that kind of incorporates um, the various things that I've been doing um, and just kind of get you up to speed as to where I'm at and where I've been. Um, so I'm currently um, in the house, as you can see. Um, I'm just catching up with some paperwork and um, sorting out some diary dates. Um, I'm sure many of you will know that feeling of just everything getting on top of you. Um, so I've been making some lists because uh, lists for me are a lifesaver um, and just getting things down on paper and out of my head has been a massive, massive help. Um, and then I've just been making some phone calls, sorting out some texts, um, some diary dates, some appointments that I need to arrange and rearrange, things that I've had to cancel. Anyway, it won't bore you with all that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the kettle on, I'm gonna take a brew over and I'll show you what I've been up to um, in the polytunnel and I'll just give you a wee update around the place and what I've been doing. an hour or so in here this morning and already it's lifted my spirits and I'm starting to feel better. So I don't want this to be a moaning old groaning old video where I'm droning on about the miseries of life because that's no fun for anybody. Um, but those of you again that follow me um, will know that I suffer from four uh, chronic conditions. Um, I have two prolapse discs in my lower back, I have endometriosis, I suffer with IBS and chronic migraine and some days when work is particularly demanding it all just gets a little bit much and one of the symptoms that I've had um, this week has just been really severe nausea hence the peppermint tea. The other thing I find um, instead of sitting regardless of any of my symptoms I do um, have a lot of pain uh, on a daily basis and just a tip for any of you that, that have chronic pain sometimes we get so into that pain it just takes a hold but actually if we can take our mind away from that um, and I find being out here with plants is so meditative and um, just involving myself and what I actually did this morning and I will show you is get my hands in the soil and get my potatoes up and remarkably I felt completely nauseous and, and unmotivated and I thought come on you can do this during the process it completely lifted and while I had my hands in the soil and I was so excited um, and I've had a much better harvest than I actually anticipated, gone, completely left me. Um, and within <laughs> five, ten minutes of um, stopping and starting to think again about how I felt, I thought, oh yes, I do still feel quite sick. But just getting on and doing something really, really helps. So enough of the moaning and groaning. I'm not going to hark on about that. What I am going to do is I'm going to show you a little update of where I'm at and um, the things that I've let slide, the things I've managed to keep on top of. Um, let's focus on the positives and I'll show you what I've been up to. So as I say, I've got myself a, a nice mug of 
peppermint tea in my beautiful new mug that I bought um, a couple of weeks ago. We had a little jolly out, oh gosh, it must be a month ago now, um, to our local garden centre uh, because in Wales we're still very much under lockdown but they're starting to ease things gently and we can actually travel five miles um, from our home and if you live rurally that's a little bit more relaxed. Um, so I've got this beautiful gardening mug um, and it's the little things in life, isn't it? So enough rambling, let me show you what I've been up to this morning and where I'm at with everything. So I'm just going to start here in the polytunnel. So just down this end, um, you can see here, these are the parsnip that I took so long to germinate and so many um, attempts. Now there's a little space at the right hand side there. Um, I've actually just pulled those up. They were the, the first uh, lot that I started um, and they were going to be so ahead of the others. I just thought, well, it's pointless exercise. So I think there's just one there and then the rest. Um, so we should have a reasonable harvest um, for Christmas. Um, this is where my uh, first early potatoes were. Um, I'm trying to think of the variety. Uh, I think Colleen. Um, and I've harvested those this morning. I should have set up the camera, but as I say, I was feeling pretty unmotivated. Um, and it was just a spur of the moment thing. I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to pull those. Um, and I've had a fabulous harvest, which I will show you. And then up here we have got um, the hanging baskets which I'd put some flower mixes in and they're coming and they're really pretty and I'm really enjoying them. Round here we have got the turnips which we are slowly but surely working our way through and they're really really tasty. Um, some at the back there as you can see whoop, have been a little bit neglected and they're going to seed. Um, I had actually put some leek here, which again, I don't know if you can see those, um, but I let them get overcrowded and overshadowed. The per parsnip, uh, parsnips, turnips were actually up to here and I've been harvesting from two rows and there's still a couple of rows left to harvest. Um, those leek may or may not bounce back, but they've been completely overshadowed by the foliage. And then I've got my carrots here and if I just show you they're actually you can see the tops there i'm quite pleased with the way they're coming and i have pulled a few um which we've eaten but i tend to leave them in the ground here we've got the beautiful beautiful chard i've got the rhubarb chard here at the front and it's just i mean that's just so beautiful i love chard and then at the back um there's the uh, swiss chard and i've got the yellow and there's actually some red and some green there as well and then at the back i have my sunflowers. Um, this one is facing completely in the wrong direction, but of course it's going towards the sun. Let's see if I can twist him round there. Look how beautiful that is. Um, and there's three, four more coming on that one. This one's going to face this way. So these are going to be absolutely beautiful and very, very cheery on a on a rainy day, which we've got again today, uh, drizzle. Although it's not as cold today. Let's just have a little look. Uh, so it's 16.9 degrees outside and 15.1 degrees sorry 15.1 degrees outside and 16.9 in the polytunnel i may close this door up when i've finished so just moving around here to the left here we've got my cucumbers and they're looking really really healthy we've got lots of flowers lots of baby cucumber coming can you see those really really happy and they're climbing their way up the canes here I've got my courgette um, and I've already been harvesting and enjoying those and then here we've got some carrots and some leek here are some baby blood I can never say it baby bulls blood there we are baby bulls blood beet and um, they're not doing as well this year normally and um, they're quite nice for the for the salad leaves but they're a little bit tough and they've not done so well um, and then some more baskets with some flowers um, over here um, this is the perpetual spinach and to be honest with you it's started to come to an end and um, it's been bolting and I've been giving those tops to the chickens um, there's just a few leaves left um, but I have started some more spinach so once that is ready this will come up and I will replenish that compost and put some more spinach in there. Then over here we have got my selection of um, either waiting to um, germinate or seedlings or some of them are quite established now. So at the very back there um, there's a few um, carrots again. Um, 
I've mentioned this many times, I do start my carrots off in pots or trays and then transplant them and I don't have too many problems um, but it isn't the best way to do them and it, it does tend to um, generally you'll end up with with forked carrots. I do find if I transplant them super quickly into nice um, soft soil particularly in the beds in here I don't have any problems um, but it isn't the best way to, to grow carrots. Um, I've got some coriander there, uh, some more leek coming. I've got lots of chilies. I've got um, ram, jalapeno and lemon chilli. You can see all of those. I have got some celery which I've never grown before which is very much ready to move and I'm not sure where I'm going to move it to yet. I've got some more peas coming and then I've got spinach in this pot here and um, some runner beans and I'll talk more about runner beans in a minute. Um, that have literally, I managed to pop those in, Ooh, I can't even think, it was in between shifts one day I decided I needed to do something um, other than work and sleep so I just popped out and had 25-30 um, minutes in here. Moving around my beans, so these two pots here are the Bellotti beans and if I just move you nice and slowly you can see they're looking fabulous and they're right up and almost going over to the other side of the polytunnel. Uh, there's been lots of flowers. Um, I do try and keep the doors open in here so I've got my pollinators coming in. Um, so I'm really hoping for some decent beans. And then in this pot here I have the runner beans and again they are all the way up to the top. We've had a mass of beautiful orange flowers and if I just take you I can show you that the beans are starting to come. That makes me very happy. Then down here I have a pot with basil which I grew from seed. I do intend to get some more going. I want a lot of basil this year because my plan is to turn a lot of my tomatoes. I've done some plum uh, variety this year and I want to turn those into sauces. So I'm very much looking forward to doing some um, basil and tomato um, sauces and keeping them in jars to preserve them. Moving on to the tomatoes, I'm really pleased with the way the tomatoes are coming on. I've got three varieties. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly which ones they are, but I know I've got the little sweet yellow ones. Um, I have a plum variety and I have a beefsteak variety, um, but without looking at the labels, I can't off the top of my head remember. But if you have a little look down here, if I just move you past these flowers, you can see we've got some tomatoes starting to come. So that is awesome. This little bucket of flower mix has been absolutely delightful. Um, it's getting a bit rambly and scrambly now, but I actually quite like that kind of tumbling look. So it's really, really pretty and I'm really, really pleased with those. It's been really nice to have flowers in the polytunnel this year as well as vegetables. And then this is today's harvest, which is what has just completely lifted my spirits. Um, so this is my crop of potatoes. Um, so a nice little haul, um, decent sizes. Um, yeah, really, really nice harvest there. And then in here, I've got some of the chard, a couple of turnips, there's a courgette, um, a couple of the onions, which they have been drying over here. Um, so there's a couple to bring into the house and a nice, amount of pea. So I've had a little tidy up here in the polytunnel and again those of you that know me will know that one of the places that keeps me sane is this polytunnel. No matter what is going on in life, how stressful work is, how bogged down with life I feel, if I can come into my clean and tidy and organised polytunnel and spend some time in here it just sets my mind straight and makes me feel better. One of the other things that I've done is I've bought myself a little radio so when I'm out here I can have a little bit of music uh, which again it really lifts your spirits doesn't it having having that radio um, which I can hear it from outside or in here so if I just want peace and quiet and just the sound of the wind chimes I can do that but if I want um, to have you know pop master or whatever else on I can pop my radio on um, and I'm sure it's good for the plants as well. So just outside the polytunnel, the grass has gone bananas um, and I really need to get the strimmer out. Um, but it's just been raining, 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 raining and I've just been working, working, working. So I know it looks um, untidy, which messes with my head, but it won't take long once 
the sun comes out and once I have a bit of time which I have got coming up to just get on top of this and neaten everything up again and um, so I've still got some potatoes over there to harvest um, that funny little bed down there that I just kind of created um, the chives are doing okay um, and there's a couple of other herbs in there the lavender that I put in there um, I don't think is going to do but there's that lovely pot of lavender on the table over there which are disappearing rapidly under the long grass um, as I say I'll get that strimmed at some point and then down here we've got the rhubarb which is doing brilliantly this year and I'm really really looking forward to having our first harvest from that so it's two years since I started the rhubarb in the polytunnel from seed transplanted it out here and it's doing absolutely brilliantly so I'm thrilled to bits with that and then I'll just take you over to the outdoor beds so I mentioned runner beans earlier um, two three weeks ago now I direct sowed um, runner beans so because I've got the ones in the polytunnel and I wanted to have some more later in the season um, so I planted two to three runner beans per base of cane so I've got one two three four five so effectively um, there's ten places I can sow, sow um, and there should have been twenty plus um, bean plants um, nothing happened. Um, I think what happened was that literally I sowed them, we'd had all that warm weather um, and no rain and it literally rained and rained and rained and rained and it hasn't stopped raining for two weeks. It's been hammering it down. Um, I had a little dig down. You can probably just see the disturbed soil um, and there's nothing. I think they've just rotted away to nothing uh, because it was just literally one extreme to the other. Uh, dry 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 and then absolutely soaking wet so that's why I've started those off in the polytunnel um, and hopefully once they get going I can transplant them out um, I did sow some radish here and they're coming along quite nicely and uh, there's a few weeds that are also coming along quite nicely so they need to be weeded and I'll just slowly move you around these Californian poppy are the ones that self-seeded from last year and they're just beautiful um, and I'm actually really enjoying this combining flowers and, and beautiful things in amongst my vegetables. Um, so I'm leaving those there. Um, yes, they're taking up some space that I could put something else in, but they're beautiful. Um, I just find them fascinating that on the bright sunny days their flowers open up um, and on these cooler dark days they close and um, they're just oh, beautiful. Um, here are some peas. Um, they, this is the plant I've taken the harvest from. Oh, here comes the rain. I better be quick. These peas are doing really, really well. Um, I planted or sowed the same. So I, I transplanted peas that I started off in the polytunnel into this area and this area. Um, and then I also direct sowed some peas so that I could have a succession. This set of canes, um, they're doing rubbish. Um, partly probably because they're competing with the poppies um, but yeah they just haven't done but these have done quite well round here are the leek left over that I overwintered that I never harvested we didn't eat and um, there's a nice big weedy crop there as well of, of grass and all sorts going on that needs sorting but I decided to let these flower and aren't they just delightful and I think sometimes it's you know just let a little area go um, and just enjoy letting them flower and how beautiful they are. So I'll just give you a little close-up. I mean, aren't they just beautiful? So I'm quite enjoying watching those bobbing about in the breeze. And then before the rain comes down too heavily, there's a bit of a weedy patch here. These are the remains of the leek that I'd originally um, transplanted out quite some time ago that the birds pecked out. Um, so there's just a cluster of some there to the right and a few here but I'm going to let those develop. Ooh, big wagon. These were the remainder of my tomato that I never gave to anybody and didn't want to lose, so I thought I'd pop them outside. Um, and they're coming, but again, it, literally the day I transplanted them, the weather changed, um, so they haven't had the best of chances, but they're better in the ground out here than they are in a tiny cramped up pot in the polytunnel. Then we have some rocket just there, which I need to just pick a bit more out. It's quite tasty. Um, and peppery and then next to the rocket there is an alpine strawberry 
you can then see my broad bean which have been flowering and are starting to bean they're not the best harvest in the world I struggled to get them going this year uh, but not bad and then at the back there the onions that I probably should have harvested two weeks ago and just didn't get around to doing um, but I'll show you them from the other side they're not bad so my onions this year they're just not going to store very well but we still got onions and if we're, if we're careful with them we can still eat them and um, I just need to keep an eye on them because the middles of them won't be too good um, because they're, they're bolting and trying to flower um, and just the middles of those um, onions won't be great so they're not good for storing but they're onions and we'll enjoy them and then down this end are my squash um, two varieties yukuki curry and the butternut squash the butternut squash weren't doing brilliantly but they seem to be bouncing back and the yukuki curry at the other end and um, I have had a flower on one of them but the rain has bashed it off um, again I need to weed this bed uh, my beer traps have been super effective um, so that makes me very happy um, and yeah they're, they're doing okay I'm quite pleased with them so I'm just going to move you around and show you the onions from the other side. So again, excuse the weeds, I've let them get a bit on top of me, but if you look, you can see there's some lovely big fat white and red onion there, which I will harvest probably next week now, because I'm back to work tomorrow night and I don't fancy harvesting them in the pouring rain. I like to do them when it's dry. So that is the outdoor beds. And I'll just give you a little pan around. Don't know if you can see the horses there up on the top. You can see the grass everywhere looking untidy. But as I say, I will get the strimmer out as soon as it's dry. So let's go back into the polytunnel because the rain is starting to come. So as I say, I thought I'd just give you a little update. Um, on where I was at. Um, everything else on the farm is doing fine. Um, I've brought the little pony in today because he's getting a little bit tubby. Um, he's been separate from the big horses for a while now. I want to put them back together. Um, reason being, um, he has become quite difficult to catch. He's a bit naughty and um, quite typical of these little native ponies. Um, all he wants to think about is his tummy. Um, so he's been on a bit of a starvation um, paddock um, so I've caught him up today and I've popped him in a stable. Because they've been separate now for ooh, probably about six weeks, um, I won't, although they know each other and they've lived together, I won't just put them straight back in together um, just in case of, of fighting. Um, Garth, the big boy, um, my main man, has got very big feet um, and it, he wouldn't mean to, but even if in just in hijinks and playing, uh, but when they've been separate for a while, there is a little bit of um, getting back to pecking order. Um, I wouldn't want him to cause any damage. So what I will do is I've got Pony on one side um, and the big boys on, I will put them on the other side so they can see each other over the fence, get to see each other again. And then when I feel that they're settled like that, I will pop them back together again. So that's where I'm at with them. Uh, the sheep are fine. Uh, Larry the lamb, he's, a, he's not a lamb anymore. He's such a big boy. Um, we managed to shear him ooh, quite a long time back. I can't remember if I've shown you any um, footage of him since he's been shorn. Um, but just, yeah, he, he would have been far too hot otherwise. The ewes, we don't have to shear. They are um, self-shedding. They shed their own wool. Um, they are Wiltshire Horn, if any of you are interested, and they're a breed that they grow quite a short, dense coat and then they just shed it off. And that was one of the advantages of having them, really. Um, we would have gone for a Wiltshire Horn ram, um, but Larry, again, those of you that follow me will know he wasn't um, something that we were planning on getting. He came to me um, uh, and needed a home when he was a little baby, so we took him. Uh, the chickens are doing brilliantly, so the ones that we had from little teeny tiny chicks that came to us uh, nearly a year ago now, um, they are all grown up, they're laying really well and they they were quite flighty, but they're much tamer now. Um, I've been uh, training them with blueberries and um, I've been just spending time um, sitting with them um, and, and hand feeding them with blueberries and that's getting them calmer. I also think that the, the X battery chucks that they're in with, are, they're very calm and they have quite a good calming influence on them. Um, so we're down now to, I think we have eight, yeah, eight chickens. Six of them are from the little chicks that we had, uh, the girls, because the boys um, and the mums went back to uh, my friend that I had them from. 
and the um, we've got two X batteries left now. Um, so I am thinking once lockdown starts to lift again, we're in Wales, so lockdown, uh, we're not able to do much um, still at the moment. But things hopefully are changing next week, which will mean I can go and see my family. Um, I'm missing them so terribly. Um, anyway, that's another story. We're being positive. We're not, we're not holding on to the negatives. Um, but I'm hoping to uh, go and um, collect some more X battery uh, rescue hens. Um, maybe four perhaps and uh, we've got space for maybe another four to six hens so we'll um if we do that um i'll i'll hope try and vlog as much of it as i can and share that with you um because i know there's a few of you that are quite interested in chickens so um i think that's pretty much everything uh, and the dogs the dogs are doing absolutely fine um because the um lockdown has been lifted slightly we've been able to pop them in the car and take them out to that because they were just getting I know we've got the farm and all this land but mental stimulation they need to go elsewhere they were getting quite bored um, and they've been chewing things um, so we've been able to pop them in the car and go to the mere which they love and to the canal which they also love and we did actually go a little bit further the other week um, because again as I say um, in Wales it's supposed to be five miles but if you live rurally I mean we're five miles from anything and um, we're allowed to go a little bit further and we, we went to a, a beautiful lake and had a little walk around that um so yeah they're happy and healthy and doing fine Kay has her um six month heart check um coming up in a couple of weeks at um the um animal hospital that we take her to uh, with the cardiologist um, so positive things are things are growing regardless of the weather things are growing um, and things are looking good and I'm managing to harvest um, I had gained quite a lot of weight um, combination of lifestyle and I hate blaming medication but some of the medication I was on was not helping um, and then I got into that downward spiral and um, I was getting quite depressed if I'm honest with you about it um, anywho I have kicked myself up the backside um, my target was to lose um, 10 kilos I'm sharing this with you because I think it'll make me keep going um, if you keep these things quiet um, you're less likely to succeed so my target was to lose 10 kilos and I've successfully lost three and a half kilos already yay um, so yeah I'm getting ever closer I am simply just cut right back on carbohydrates um, and I'm just being a bit mindful about um, not snacking um, and yeah just changing slightly my eating pattern um, it's really difficult on night shifts um, not to eat weird things at weird times um, and I always used to try and eat before 10 o'clock at night and I, I found that really helped um, and that had slid by the wayside um, you know and, and eating you know chili and rice at three o'clock in the morning your body can't really cope with it and also that thing of being busy 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 and not having time to stop for food is when you tend to grab for the snacks so I have started taking um Thing, because the thing on a night shift is you can only eat what's there uh, everything's shut you can't leave the building anyway even if things were open so you can only eat what you take with you so if you don't take the bad foods with you then you can't eat them so I've just been making sure I take loads of healthy snacks and fruit and veg um, so I cut down on the carbs and yeah really really successful really pleased with that um, so hoping to just keep slowly but surely just shed those last few kilos that I need to to get rid of um, yeah so that's something really positive so all the animals happy and healthy um, overall you know things are pretty good um, just work has taken over a little bit over the last couple of weeks um, yeah so I'm hoping people seem to have enjoyed my uh, meet the animals um, videos and I, I haven't forgotten uh, about the rest of them I've just been so busy um, so I'm gonna try and continue those videos so I'm not going to ramble on anymore. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my little tour and update. Um, I hope I've not been too doomy and gloomy and miserable. Um, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you for following me. Um, if any of you are new to my channel, um, do check back and see some of my other videos. And if you like what you see, um, do consider subscribing and hit that bell to get notifications of my latest videos. And I promise to try not to leave quite such a long gap in between posting. I hope you're all well. I hope that now that the lockdown is starting to ease in places, particularly in England, that you're all managing to see your family and do a little bit more. Um, I hope you're enjoying your growing, uh, despite this ridiculously peculiar weather that we're having. I hope 
more importantly that you're all staying safe and healthy so thanks again for watching take care and i will see you all again very soon